This time on Rad Rat Video, we design a skateboarding trading card game. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's try it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel about skateboarding in all of its forms, including video games and reviews of various things. Today I'm answering your questions, which were all submitted by going to radratvideo.com. So go there and submit your questions or your suggestions or anything you want. It all come through to my inbox. You can also buy shirts and uh, patches on there while you're there. Not this shirt anymore. This one actually sold out finally. But uh, let's get into the questions. First one is from Super Depressed, who says, uh, he sent me a few questions, I picked out two. The Earth is about to get wiped out. A magical dimensional time genie pops out of nowhere and states the following, you have been chosen to be saved. You're going to be transported to an almost identical dimension. This dimension is identical in every sense except for the fact that skateboarding doesn't exist in this new one. You can only bring one skateboard video with you as both both uh, as evidence and hopefully inspiration to, to the new dimension to kickstart skateboarding again. What skate video would you choose to bring and why? <laughs> what a crazy way to phrase that sentence. So skateboarding doesn't exist on my new dimension that's equal in every other way. How do I show it to people and how do I inspire them to want to do it too? Um, I picked out a couple. I think my real answer would be fully flared because I think that's just the best all around skate video. Lots of really great stuff in there, lots of different people. It's also really long, so you'd get more tricks to show people. Uh, it gives you more of an idea of the different spots that are skatable, and it would inspire people more. Uh, I think one of the problems would be if you show them only pro level stuff, they're gonna, they're just not gonna get there. If I say, okay, like here's, you know, here's what the pro did. That's a kickflip back tail. That's a 270 out. And they say, okay, uh, I'm going to go try that. And you say, well, hold on. You got to learn how to ollie. And then in a, a month or two, you might be ready to do a kickflip maybe. And then maybe you'll be able to do a rolling kickflip. And then in about a year, you can try a back tail. Kickflip back tails at least, I don't know, three years out. And then, you know it would be tough to show them only pro level stuff, but it's the only thing you get to bring. I can show them basics, I guess, right? So I'd have to reinvent the skateboard though. Um, and then that would be the more advanced stuff. Also thought of round three because of, um, of Rodney Mullen and day one being in it, having some like freestyle Rodney Mullen weirdness and dark slides and under flips and all that kind of thing would be a good thing to introduce to new skaters too. He also does a line where he does like a 540 shove it to manual on flat. Like you don't see that. No one else does it like that. No one else skated like him. So if you get some samples of really normal skateboarding, Chris Haslam's in there and he does a pretty normal part, Greg Lutzka, all these other guys. And then you've got this really weird part that would inspire more ideas, more concepts in skateboarding. Um, just like having a longer one would show more spots, this would show more ideas and the primo slides and all that type of thing. So I think it would give a, a bigger idea of what skateboarding is. And my last example, um, I think my real answer would be the first one fully flared. My last one as an example would be Adventures in Cheese, which is a 90s skate video. I think it was called, it was by Blockhead or something like that. It's a lot of people skating on, on curbs. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a good uh, video to watch if you're trying to see like, there's some stairs and there's some, you know, some slightly bigger stuff, but a lot of it is just doing grinds on curbs and doing some slappies and, and weird things like that. And uh, if I were to try to introduce skateboarding to a new universe who had never heard of it, but are perfectly capable as people, maybe starting with something like that would be a good idea. It would be kind of a prank, like, hey, this stuff didn't last long because we all decided it wasn't very cool. 
but um, this is what skateboarding is, and it would be more fun, and it would be at a closer level that people could actually do. You could learn how to grind a curb pretty quickly, uh, and then you can do a couple of different grinds. You can learn how to kick flip, and you can learn, you know, some of that stuff would be a little bit easier. There's still a lot of really hard things in that video, though. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to think of, like, what would be the best joke video to bring? I couldn't really think of one. Uh, unless it was Dan Gesmer, uh, I forget what his video was called. But if I introduced that only, I don't think skateboarding would take off. So that wouldn't do me any good. There was the Casper video, which is a freestyle only video that came out around 2003. Uh, that would be interesting. And I would enjoy it as somebody who likes freestyle. But freestyle died out for the most part, so I don't think it would take off as much as street skating would. But maybe I introduce them to freestyle and let them develop street on their own. I don't know, there's a lot of answers. Um, that is a tough one. Okay, uh, your second question was, if you had to pick between never being able to manual again versus never being able to grind again, what would you choose and why? I would never manual again. Um, I'm not good at it, my balance is just not there. Um, I like to blame it on being tall, but it's, I just suck at it. Like I can manual on a, on a pad or nose manual, but if you want me to do anything else, if you want me to spin or flip or shove it or anything, I can shove it out of a manual, but like anything else, it starts to get a little bit too much. My balance is just not that good. So, but I really like doing grinds. I could do a decent crooked grind. Um, you know, I could do all kinds of different stuff, you know, kick flip into a 5 0 and that type of thing. I would have a lot more fun doing grinds than I would doing a manual. I don't do a lot of manuals. So, that one wasn't too tough for me. All right, next question is from Link who says, I started skating pretty recently. I'm 20 years old, and all I can do is ride around. Do you think I should start learning to ride switch as well or just go with tricks? I'm asking because I'm goofy, but my right leg is way stronger than the left one, so maybe I should be regular. Uh, leg strength doesn't really matter as far as what stance you are. I can see why you're thinking that because you could push harder, and that's good. I'm glad you're not trying to push uh, Mongo, so good, good for you. But I don't know if switching doing switch stuff so quickly is really that big of a deal but here's the thing here's the real true answer there's no right and wrong way to skate if you want to do a bunch of switch if you want to do both tricks like learn kickflip and then learn switch kickflips and just the whole way doing both sides the same all the whole way along and learning everything in both stances that's perfectly fine if that's cool to you then do it and i could see some some uh upside to that like me, if I was, um, I, I always picture that it, it would be kind of cool to be somewhere in public where there's someone skating and he bails and the board comes to me and I hop on and just do a trick and then kick it back. And you're like, what? That guy in front of the grocery store knows how to impossible, you know, like it would be kind of cool. But I, I always wonder, like, there's a way for me to look like I've never ridden a skateboard before too, which is to try to do something switch. I can do like a switch kickflip or something like that, but it's not 100%. And I might land it and land like tail heavy and shoot out and fall. So like my switch is really bad. If you don't want to be in a weird position that I've made up like that, then the yeah, going all the switch would be a good idea. But uh, my real my real recommendation is to try as many different things as possible. Learn how to do a switch ollie, sure. Learn how to drop in on a ramp. Learn how to do a couple of stalls. Learn how to do like a, a grab. Learn how to do a, a Casper or some other kind of freestyle trick. Learn how to do a grind and a slide on a curb. Just learn some of the very basics of every category you can. If you can do some downhill in your area or whatever, try that too. Just do a little bit of, of everything and then decide what stuff you like. If you don't like switch at all, you don't have to do it at all, as I just demonstrated. But um, yeah, it's it's completely up to you. There's no rules, and there can't be any rules. Okay, next is from County Beasters, 
who says baseball cards, basketball cards, football cards, Pokemon, etc. Trading cards are a major hobby, so why never for skateboarding? Give us the rad rat take on a skateboarding TCG trading card game approach and how that could work and how much my PSA 10 first edition Chris Joslin rookie will be worth in 20 years from now. Okay, so um, there's a couple of different things with cards. Cards are huge. Right now, I went to a comic uh, show. It was like a, uh, they rented out like a conference room in a, in a hotel. It was bigger than you're thinking of as a conference room. And they all the hallways and everything had, it was all comic books, right? And so I drive all the way down there. I go there. It's nothing but sports cards. There were some Pokemon cards in a few comics, but I was thinking of it as a comic show and it was all sports cards. Sports cards are huge right now. They're starting to cool off. But yeah, if you have like a, you know, Michael Jordan rookie card or a Kobe Bryant or something like that, like that stuff is going for real money right now. But that's a different thing. You're talking about like a skateboarding, uh, like skateboarding cards that you could go buy and they could be valuable someday. That's different from a collectible card game. So if I were to make a skateboarding card game, like a Pokemon or a Magic or a, y- a Yu-Gi-Oh or a Flesh and Blood or a Keyforge or a Final Fantasy or a Weiss, <laughs> there's a lot of them, um, Dragon Ball Super, if I were to make a game like that, I've given this a lot of thought. And the reason why is because I am actually working on a card game with a friend. It's not a collectible card game. You don't have to buy like booster packs and expand. It's like a single box game that you can just play. Um, So he's done all this art and come up with all these ideas. And I was trying to help him come up with a set of rules and how you'd actually play the game. Um, and he has a friend who owns a printing press and he can make like professional level cards that look good. And so I've been helping him come up with how that would work and how you might play and how you might package and sell it. And so I was thinking like, man, if I can make a skateboarding version, a skateboarding card game, what would I do? Cause that could be a big deal. There's nothing like that right now. So I came up with a couple ideas. They all need some work. Uh, The first would be something like a skate dice, like something that you would take when you're actually skating and you, you know, you draw something and you do something and it gives you a a trick to try. It's, I don't think it would be as good as skate dice. um, But if I could figure out a way, because it could be more complicated, there's more cards, right? So you could pick, this is a grind. There's no grinds in skate dice. Um, At least not that I've seen. I don't, I don't own any, but I've looked them up anyway. Um, you know, and have different grinds and and stuff like that. And you could maybe, maybe, maybe make a card game like that, but I don't think so. Um, the other one I was thinking is like a game of, of, of skate where you would, uh, draw your hand and your hand would have very basic tricks in it. It would have like pop, shove it, kick, flip, kick, flip, heel, flip, front, big spin or something like that. And what you would have to do it would be like playing skate. Um, so you would put down your cards. I played a kickflip and a kickflip. So I've done a double kickflip or a kickflip, kickflip and a shove it. And now I did a, a nightmare flip. And so then the other player would have to match that, but they would have all different cards and it could get really complicated because you could do like, all right, I have a backside flip. Uh, I'm going to add a front side big spin. So now it's a hard flip and I'm going to add a 360 flip. So yeah, it was, now it's going to spin. So you'd have to like do the math of it spun twice front or spun once front side, but twice back side. So it all resolved down into being the same thing. Um, that doesn't sound super fun to like have to do the math and have like a check box and like figure out how it would actually all work. Um, but it was, it was an interesting idea. There might be something there to like play a game of skate with somebody using cards. What would that look like? 100%. I'm not sure, but there might be something there. The other one I was thinking of was a game called flesh and blood, which is really cool where you have your main character 
And on the board, you have all of his or her equipment. So, you know, right hand stuff, left hand stuff, helmets, you know, armor, gauntlets, boots, all this kind of stuff. And then the stuff in your hand is like, uh, I mean, you see there are like upgrades to your stuff or it's an attack. So it'd be like full strength swing. And then you would attack the other person and, and all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking like a skateboarding version of that could be like, um, so your character, your character is really good at grinds and you get a plus two every time you do a, a grind. And so you set up your, uh, your board and then you might draw like the really smooth trucks and you play your trucks. And when you do, that makes all of your grinds uh, further. You get an extra 20 points every time you do a grind. And so you can build your character to do stuff. And then when you play your attacks, they would be tricks. And so I do a crooked grind and I get a plus because my skater is good at it. And I get a plus because of my trucks. Uh, I get a minus because my deck is like the basic one and it's all chipped up, uh, you know, and you could come up with a way to like to do tricks. And then the other person could counter it. And they could do like throw a rock, uh, uh, throw a rock in your path or put their hand over the lens cap so it doesn't get recorded. Things like that. Uh, and that could be kind of fun. I've been kind of brewing up this concept in my head of a way to like outfit a skater and play a game. But I don't know what makes it competitive yet. Um is it just how many, whoever reaches a certain score first? It's more fun to have to attack the other person. Most successful games, you have to attack the other person. So if it's like, you know, I get sponsor money for all the tricks I do, and whoever reaches a million dollars first wins, that could be fun, but it'd be more fun to take out the other guy. So I don't know how it would work. But I've got three distinct ideas that are all percolating. And if I come up with one, I know all the right people to actually get it made. So you might see something in the future. Um, if you have any ideas on that, go to my website and submit uh, your question. You know, you can add questions for the channel. You can put anything you want in there. Game ideas, anything like that. If you want to put that in there, I would like to take a look at it. So that's it for this episode. If you want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon. You can join here, here on YouTube. You can uh, like, you can comment, you can subscribe, you can tell all of your friends, and that's it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.